Medical Symposium. We have the fourth speaker and the last in this session, Dr. Apurbo Ghosh, who is regarded as an icon in the field of pediatrics and neonatology. It is our pleasure to listen to him now. Dr. Apurbo Ghosh. Good afternoon. I've got many uh, students uh, I can see. Now, normally in exam, what do you do? You answer the best question first, or you answer the list that you know about, you answer first. Now, what I see that the most people, they answer their best questions, and they set their standard, and then what happens subsequently, as you an answer much worse answer sheet, you get le much less and less mark. Now, what I normally do is I answer my the no uh, worst that I know in the beginning, and then subsequently I increase my standard. Now, what Vishwabandhan has done, they have given the best speakers first, and then has asked me to talk. And on top of that, there is some mistake, some on the part of Vishwabandhan and some on my part, that I actually prepared on prevention of cerebral palsy. So there is a lot of overlapping, Anyway, what I will see, that what I can talk about in these five minutes. The cerebral palsy incidence all over the world is almost same. Whatever you have seen that the incidence is three per thousand, prevalence is three per thousand, be it in India or be it outside, but it is slightly more in India. Maybe there are some other factors other than the preterm baby and care. What I feel, that the most important factor for the prevention of cerebral palsy or the neonatal care is the in utero transfer. Half of our babies are brain damaged during their transfer to a higher center. And that's the reason I say that in utero transfer. And that's the reason we have made a uh, maternity unit but that if your baby is high risk, come and deliver to us and we'll take the care of the baby immediately in the next floor. So that's very, very important, that in utero transfer. You all know that you have been discussed about the uh, causes of cerebral palsy. I'm not uh, going into the details of that. But what I see, that many of the obstetricians, I'm not blaming anyone, the moment they see that it is 37 weeks, Sometimes on the parents' request, sometimes some other reasons, they try to deliver those babies. But look at this, that if you are born at 40 weeks, the chances of cerebral palsy is much less. So many obstetricians, even the parents say, Dr. Babu, and that is very common. So please see, that your baby is delivered at 40 weeks. Nature doesn't do any mistake. Let's take it from here that nature doesn't do any mistake. The diabetes, yes, I know that sometimes the, uh, the obstetrician feels that carrying on the pregnancy is maybe difficult, but I think it's better to monitor that baby under admission than to deliver a preterm baby, and especially when it's a diabetic. The birth weight, you all know that uh, there is a high chance that if it's a preterm, I'm not going. The intrauterine infections has already been uh, talked about. Now, intrauterine infections, you have seen that the chorioamnuritis can be a problem. So try to prevent that so that we can. And it has been seen in the neonatal blood that if you are having interleukin 1, 8, and 9, or TNF uh, alpha or rantes in the cord blood, if that is more, then you have chance, more chances of cerebral palsy. What we see that if we find that there is consanguinity of marriage, there is more chances of cerebral palsy. This is one area where I am uh, observing and working that what is the incidence of cerebral palsy when there is consanguinity of marriage. Is cerebral palsy sometimes a genetic factor? I don't say always, but is cerebral palsy sometimes a genetic factor uh, is there? So consanguinity of marriage can be there. <clears throat> the prevention is the maternal addiction. I stay close to an university, and I see that how many of the girls they smoke. Boys they smoke, they will die early. Doesn't matter to anybody. But if the mother smoke, that is a factor which can lead to cerebral palsy. If the mothers drink, 
that also can be uh, quite dangerous. And so what is important is the antenatal care. CME infection you cannot take care, but you can take care of syphilis. You can immunize them with varicella and rubella vaccines and other vaccines. The mothers should not drink at all. See what happens, that fetal alcohol syndrome will be a problem in our country like it is a problem in the Western country. I have a mother who still cannot stop smoking and he has a microcephaly with borderline developmental delay with a birth weight of one kg. So the mothers should not smoke. But asphyxia, I think there are a lot of neonatologists here and I can see Dr. Oshim Molik and others. I am not going to talk of the neonatal care, but what I feel is that the most important is the hypothermia and hypoglycemia. Now, what is the secret of success in life? If you can counteract your negative point into a positive, you can be more successful. See, once what happened, I was uh, attending a neonatal delivery, and the temperature was showing to be 35 degree, but I couldn't feel that it is 35 degree. Because of the lack of hair, I didn't feel the heat that I'm supposed to get. So I said that this is not working, and then it was really not working. So had it been there, then the baby would have a hypothermia. So hypothermia and hypoglycemia and early feeding and early breastfeeding, these are the important points, and many are not really very well trained in neonatal resuscitation program. Thanks to uh, <coughs> Dr. Tridi Banerjee and others and his team that the neonatal resuscitation program is really coming up and that's why it's important. The blood group of the baby is sometimes not done. See, if the mother is O, be very careful about the jaundice. And more and more obstetricians are discharging the babies much early, and so they are going home and coming back with a very high bilirubin. And that's what the problem in the USA also, because they discharge the babies early. But remember that they have a very good community nurse service, which we do not have. So that is very important that the hyperbilirubin needs to be taken care, <coughs> and the neonatal uh, RDS and all others needs a separate session for the management of these uh, babies. Prematurity has already been discussed. Magnesium sulfate, uh, as you know, that has been discussed. I'm not going into the details. And also the other tocolytics like ritodrine, nephidipine, and others are very, very important for prevention of cerebral palsy. From the neonatal point of view, I would again stress that it, at the time of the birth, you need a training. Whether it's a doctor or the nurse, it's new day training, so that's what the NRP program is doing. And then you need to prevent the neonatal jaundice, neonatal hypothermia, neonatal hypoglycemia, and neonatal sepsis. All these are preventable, and uh, all of you know that. And thank you very much, and uh, sorry for the uh, controversy that raised because of the program that was given to me. I thought I'm supposed to talk on neonatal prevention of cerebral